do you think property prices in Turkish lira wise double in say five years or they go beyond that? I think in Turkish lira terms, um, I'd be extremely surprised if property prices did not double in central Istanbul. Yes. I'd be extremely surprised. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk. In this episode, we are at our Istanbul office with Cameron Diggin. Hello. Cameron, welcome to the show. Today, I will be um, having a go at you. At in, me? Yes. I, I will be having... having no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to have a go at you. But um, today's topic is really, really... Um, what you might call that? Um, now that uh, the Turkish lira is going down. Oh, is it? It, 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 it oh, has this since tendency... When? Turkish now. lira yes. is a currency with amazing gravity We're and as you know gravity. and as you okay. know the r laws of gravity dictate that if something is too heavy for its own good it's gonna sink it's gonna sink okay. it's, it's gonna come down so so, so you're saying so, that's what's happening so turkish lira being this extremely gravitational currency okay it is coming down cool. now here is the ultimate question yeah and this is the question that's been on minds of many of our clients okay how do you make money in an economy the currency of which is continuously depreciating well i mean first of all let me say this turkish lira depreciating against um, dollar or any other hard currency is not an exception yeah and and i think we covered this point at least twice, if not three times, in the past episodes about Turkish lira depreciating, why and how and what should investors do, we looked at this point. Yes. So I will, I, I, I will reiterate that Turkish lira depreciating against US dollar is expected. Yeah. If it was to appreciate, I'd be like, what's going on? Yeah. Let's look at the fundamental reasons behind why Turkish lira is appreciating because the macroeconomics of Turkey is such I'm not saying it's good or bad it's such I'm saying yeah that Turkish lira is likely to continue depreciating in the foreseeable future and if you remember we had done an episode where I had graphically shown mm -hmm. the consolidated annual depreciation average depreciation of turkish lira and if you remember that figure was kind of between 10 to 12 percent per annum yes from 2002 all the way up to 2018 which is like a 16 17 year period a long period of course it and is. when we took the average depreciation year on year it was 10 to 12 percent so if you're telling me that since last November, Turkish lira depreciated 12% yes. against US dollar, then I would say to you... That's not news. That's no news to me. Okay. I keep on hearing this argument a lot. People are saying, okay, um, you have an economy, the currency of which is depreciating, and certainly the, the average man... On the on, on the streets, the burden on their shoulders is you know increasing every day. The life is getting more and more expensive for these people. The salaries are not rising, um, correlated to the uh, exchange rate. So ultimately, for the real estate market, for the properties, there will be less and less people who could afford to buy these places. Do you think this argument is valid? And do you think does this argument apply to Istanbul property? I think the argument is valid and it certainly does apply to Istanbul real estate market. And this is why I say low entry level city center. Yeah. Because if you go and invest in premium properties, albeit they might be rather attractive in terms of the lifestyle they offer, if you're into that kind of lifestyle, um, if you're into that, yeah, if you want to live there, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. Okay, 
Um, yep, they're all there and um, you can invest in them. But if you're looking to make money, no. Because, you know, in as you explained, um, you need to stay within afford the affordable zone. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the um, population of Istanbul, which is almost touching 20 million today, mm -hmm. um, doubling from mid-90s. Yes. In the mid-90s, the population of Istanbul was 10, 12 million. No, I got maybe, you there. Maybe even that's, less. That, that's the wrong information. Maybe 8 In million. In mid-90s, 1950, I think the population no, was. No, mid-90s, 1990. Oh, mid-1990s, yes, yeah, sorry. No, we're not talking 1950. Yeah. In 1963... The yeah. consensus done in 1963 was 3 million people. Yes. Today is 20 million. Yes. You see, the, 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 the growth is immense. Yes. Istanbul is the most desirable city in Turkey. And it is very fast becoming yeah. the most desirable city in this part of the world as well. So it's a hub. Of and it's it attracting is. people like a magnet, despite the interest rates and the, and the depreciation and the currency. Enough. It is attractive. And the attraction has been there for... A good part of 4,000 years. It's not a new thing. Of Istanbul. course. I, are so you saying what, what, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. The population of this city is young. Yes. Um, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, 65% is under the age of 30. Mm -hmm. And culture is changing. People no longer get married in their early 20s or mid-20s. They're delaying that decision. They're delaying the decision to have families. They are kind of moving out living together mm -hmm. the living patterns the the the, the culture is changing. the society itself the is society changing. is changing so in this changing society in in this changing society where the largest portion of the real estate domestic real estate buyers are young people who are upwardly mobile but not necessarily with very deep pockets mm -hmm. then the key is affordable luxury so are you saying okay um what p sh you should be focusing on not necessarily how appealing the project or the property is with all of these added services and added facilities and amenities etc but you should focus on the very humanly need of having a shelter, having a roof overhead. And the demand for that is never going to go away. And in You're an right. economy where the, the, the concrete, the iron, and all the other materials are indexed to dollar and the construction cost increases yes. with the dollar, so will the value of these properties uh, will increase. Yet the demand is still there as the basic shelter, as the home that people want. You're That's absolutely right. I think... Location is number one. Yeah. Because people will pay for a location. And they will buy a property if you're in your late 20s, early 30s, or mid 30s. You, you, you have a decent income coming in. You're either single or living with a partner or living with a, a, a wife or a husband. No kids. Okay? So you kind of look forward to earning more because you're on the path. But you haven't got the deepest of pockets today. So what are you going to buy? You, you need a decent home in the city center so you can commute to work easily plus all the entertainment and lifestyle that you want is around you. And believe me, for Istanbul people, this is very important. Yes. They don't want to be driving an hour and back to meet their friends. They want to hop out and back yeah. to meet their friends. This is a very important aspect for the Turkish people living in Istanbul of certain demographics. Yes. And they are our target market, okay? And there are millions of them. Millions of them. Yeah. So you got to look at what they can afford. And what they can afford is the location. They want the location. It, when it comes to all those services and facilities, believe me, they can do without all of them. Of course. Except possibly car parking facility. Yeah. So... Good location, a decent development, small one, maybe 10 apartments, 20 apartments, 30 apartments in one small complex. You can't even call it a complex, a building. With a car park, covered or otherwise, as long as it has a car park, the guy can come, drive, go upstairs, rather than 
go round and round the blocks yes. looking for a parking yes. slot, which is which is a which is a murder. Okay, then believe me, that's a very very desirable property, despite what view it has, despite even what the street is like, mm -hmm. as long as the location is there. So and affordability is there, and that's the segment where the demand is highest today and that's the segment where demand will be highest next year year after year after so because I, of the demographics of Istanbul I heard um, one of the I, th I think one of the YouTube comments uh, somebody said Woo, if you were to purchase a property in Istanbul five years ago the property n needed to double in price in Turkish lira terms just to break even, break even yeah. on the USD terms. Yeah. Say you've been in the market for many, many years. Do you think property prices in Turkish lira wise double in say five years or they go beyond that? I think in Turkish lira terms, um, I'd be extremely surprised if property prices did not double in central Istanbul. Yes. I'd be extremely surprised. Yes. Because if I look at five years prior, I can tell you zone by zone where they not only doubled, but they tripled in Turkish yes. terms. And I can tell you, again, zones where they didn't even double. Yes. So the, the, the writer or whoever left the comment has a point there. Of course. So again, it's about... Being selective, it's about knowing where to invest. And um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Do you remember the roof building in Besiktas? Of course. That we sold. In two years, in Turkish Jira terms, the price doubled there. Oh. In two years. In, in less than two years. We, we started selling it just at the time that COVID hit. So it's which was year March and a half 2020. Ago. Yeah, a year I'll, and a half I'll, ago. I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you a stat. Do you remember the four-bedroom um, duplex at, at the roof, like the, the top floor? Yes. Do you remember how much we sold it for? No. 1.6 million we sold it Are for. Are you sure? Yes, yes. In April 2020, 1.6 okay. million Turkish liras. Now, the same place, they're asking for 4 million. Of course they would. Okay. Now, see, from 1.6 to 4 million in a year and a half is amazing. Okay. Is, is amazing by any standards. Now, yes, the Turkish lira is, is going down. Yes, back then the Turkish lira was 6.5, I think. Take out all the depreciation. Take out, take all, out the depreciation all the depreciation and everything. Whoever bought that duplex yes. is well in the pocket today. That's what I'm saying. He's well in the pocket. And, and think about your little popular project in, in the city center, Shishli. Oh. Same thing. I, I, in, in about a year or a year and a half time, doubled yeah. and there are so many areas and so many properties especially in city center and urban regeneration areas they tend to double in like a year time in turkish lira terms as well yeah. but um when you take out whatever you need to take out in in hard currency terms you're still at a very very appreciating uh scenario of but course. another problem is a of property course. that used to sell for i don't know um three hundred thousand turkish liras five, six years ago in some of these suburbs is now 500, which, which when you factor in the dollar, the depreciation, it's a loss making, it's, it's a loss -making situation. Yeah. So I understand where the, the, the clients are coming from. I understand the concerns that they have in their minds. However, you can be the most cultured, you can be the best economist or study or have 20 PhDs or from Harvard, Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can understand the Turkish property market. It doesn't mean that you can understand the um, the, the Turkish lira and the depreciation. We're not we're not really breaking atom. That's what I'm saying. But no, we're not breaking the atom. But you need to understand the economy, the dynamics, the society, and everything on the face value. Ten years ago, the dollar was like 1.8. Now it's nine. So, so in this scenario, it has to mean that shit. Everybody's lost money in Turkey, but if everyone's lost money in Turkey in ten years, 
Why are the number of foreigners on a year-on-year basis who are buying properties in Turkey are rapidly increasing? I don't think citizenship is the only thing that no, does no, no. that. No, no, of course it isn't. So, so, so certainly there are a lot of people who understand how the market works. And this was really and truly the, the reason why we wanted to do this episode. Because well, one, of our, one of our clients, I'm not going to name him, of yeah. course, the fund manager. Fund okay. manager. You, you, know, you know him. We, 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 we're doing some other business with him now. Um, he invested four or five months ago, didn't he? Four months ago. In Kiatana. Yes. But we actually got him Eren. Yeah, Aaron got him a very, very, very good deal. I think he invested about in in, a, in about a dozen properties. We started renting out the properties now. Do you know what his starting yield is? What? Now I'm going to say this, and and then everybody is going to come and say we want the same, and we're going to have to say you're not going to get the same because this but, is an but exception. But then, then don't say it. No, I'm going to say it. His yield is eight percent. Oh. That, that's that's a one-off. And he bought the properties four months ago. That's His a yield is eight percent because that's a one-off. Because now we, I know people are going to come at me and say, "I'll let him no, be one eight percent." Because we, we, no. we managed to we managed to get such a good deal on. An but you ur- bought it bulk. Urban bulk, urban regeneration project in Kautane. How much was the sum amount of money that he invested? I can't remember, but let me let me let me tell you, um, the price, the prices he paid for the apartments were like. 30 35 percent below market value but how many apartments he bought 11 i think 10 11 so 11 apartments yeah. as opposed to one apartment now i get that yeah but what i'm what i'm what i'm trying to say is he's a serious investor um who could invest anywhere in the world and in fact he has and um he is really really happy with what he did in Turkey four months ago. Yes. And we, I was talking to him a few days back, and, and and despite the depreciation, when you factor all that in, he's still so much in the pocket. So this is a guy who kind of invested in the right place at the right time. And, you know, these types of opportunities do come. And, you know, whenever, when, whenever we have clients with us and we meet these opportunities, we will always... We will always advise. Yes. And you'll find nine out of ten cases, I'm not going to say 100%, but 90% of times you'll find that these types of opportunities are not those high-rise, yes. luxury, premium projects. Correct. They're not. Yeah. They're not. Anyway, so... Okay. Uh, Cameron, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. And really and truly, guys, I mean, I, I said it in the beginning, and, and, and let me say this again, that from, from, from outside, it might look like, yes, Turkish Lira is losing value. How are we going to make money? But if, if this, this wheel is turning and if Turkey has all this, you know, the, um, the, the GDP growth and if, if the market is growing bigger and bigger and if the amount of foreign buyers are coming in more and more, that means that it isn't you don't you don't judge the book by its cover you really need to deep dig and in order for you to deep dig we can uh you know help you uh, if you can text us on this whatsapp number we can contact you with um we can get you in contact with one of our client advisors who could explain uh, the real estate dynamics with a bit of luck yeah yeah with and a bit of uh, luck. yeah we're not we're not economists so we're not going to speak about why turkish is depreciating or why we're is it bra- depreciating. we're not going to split yeah. the atom we're not going to split the atom but um please have an open mind and you know come and talk to us all right guys thank you very much for watching and with this whatsapp number you can always reach us if you have any questions please comment them down below and if you have any ideas that you want us to cover please put them on the comment section down below thank you very much for watching see thank you in the next you. one